Now, if you have understood this much, I am going to again confuse you because if you ask for an executor, right? You say I want an executor, hmm? and how much memory you want executor? You say I want 10 GB. By default, you get only 90 percentage of it. Okay, because 10 percentage is allocated for system calls. It is a container. It has to accept system calls and respond. So you say 10 GB is 10 GB is full not you will, it will not give you full 10 GB. 10 percentage system will take. So what you get? 9 GB. In this you will not get. In this you get only 60 percentage. So ultimately some 54 percentage of the RAM only you will get. Because it is a JVM, right? There is garbage collection, JVM management, all that requires memory. So, in reality, if you look at a Spark cluster, if you ask for 10 GB container, you get around 5.8 GB for RDD, remaining all system will take. Please keep it in your mind because this is an interview question. So, you will go and say, ah, 100 GB RAM I will get. They will say, no, it will not boss. Ah, so, by default, if you ask for 10 GB, 10 percent system calls will take. Container has to communicate with your operating system, right, and yarn. So for these things, it will reserve some memory, right? So from 10 GB, you became 9 GB. In this 9 GB, your JVM has to manage its garbage collection and communication. Uh, all this, it will take another, I think, uh, I don't know the exact number, 30 percentage or something it will take. It will drill down to total, I think, 54 or 56 percentage of this 10 GB only your RDD memory you will get to actually fit the partition. Which means in 10 GB you get roughly around 6 GB to fit the partition. So don't think that you get a JVM 10 size, you can fit 10 GB of worth partition. No, it doesn't work like that. So these are actually internal to Spark, but when we run we will understand. I mean in production when we run, because then your calculation will be wrong, right? If you don't understand this, your calculation will be wrong. So these calculations will matter for your interviews and all. That's what I'm saying because if you go for a typical interview where if you say you know Spark, these are the things people ask usually. I mean they won't ask like, hey what is the difference between Spark and Map? Anybody will say that. <laughs> they know that, right? So these are kind of questions they will ask from where you get memory, who will give memory, what will happen if I do this. Even I'm not an expert on Spark. I have started working like three years almost but you know, some of the things even I am very surprised. Sometimes you will say, oh, this is possible. <laughs> I didn't know this. So then you run it and see that, okay, I can see this, right? Not everything you can't learn also in Spark, right? Okay, so this part, partitions and uh, uh, parallelism. So now if you look at the picture, does it make more sense, this picture? So you have four blocks. You ask for four containers, four partitions, ideal case. Each is loaded and that's called your RDD, right? Now the real question. How do you write a Spark program, right? Basically, that is what you want to do. Apart from RDD or RAM and all, once you get the data, you should analyze the data. So how do I analyze the data? In, in Python, did you uh, learn something called a higher order function? So normally, when you write a Python function, you will say function, then function name, blah, blah, blah. That's how uh, def and all, then you write a function. And you will reuse the function. Why are you creating a function? You can call it anytime. There is something called uh, anonymous function or disposable function. Let's say I want to create a function, I will use it only once. I don't want it anymore. So you don't have to really give a name for the function or definite, you can create it on the fly. That is called anonymous function. It's called anonymous function, anonymous. Okay. In, in uh, Spark programming, in Spark programming, what we do is that we have something called higher order function. There is something called higher order function. What is a higher order function? Let's say I have a function called ABC. Hmm? I can pass another function to this function. That's called a higher order function. Meaning this ABC is a function. And normally you will pass some parameter or something, some value, right? You will say A is this, B is this. That is what you send. But I can have a function and I can pass another function to this function. That's called a higher order function. So we will be passing anonymous functions here. This lambda is an anonymous, anonymous function. I will show you the code. It will become better. 
But in Spark, basically what we do is that once you create an RDD, now you have the data ready. Your data is now I want to process the data. How do you process the data? You have something called transformations. So it is actually there in a Spark website. It's also a good uh, that you can look at Spark official website. How do you go? Spark.apache.org. Yeah. So Spark.apache.org is the official website of Spark. And if you go to documentation, it will say latest releases 2.3.0, right? And these are the older versions and all. If you click on here, you can see all the Spark versions. You can see that 163 was the last Spark 1 version. Now we are on 230. This is our version, I mean latest version. And if you go to documentation, let's say latest release. Imagine latest release, okay? If you scroll down, okay? Here you can see RDD programming guide, see? And if you click on this, okay? And scroll down a bit, this we will come back. You can see a resilient distributed data set or RDD. This is what we created, right? So we just created an RDD, at least theoretically. So once you create an RDD, I will show you how to create it, okay? You have RDD operations. So now my data is available as an RDD. What can I do with the RDD, right? So that is where you can start writing your functions, okay? Anonymous function. Uh, and yeah, these are the transformations. This, this is what you need to understand. So these are all transformations you can use in Spark. Map, filter, flap map, there are many actually. So if I want to filter my data, I will just call this filter, okay? If I call filter, it will ask me, what do you want me to filter? Within this bracket, I will write my expression to filter. That is how you filter your data. Map is another, it is like for each, okay? Uh, map I will call, map will ask me like, what do you want me to do? So you will write an expression within map, what map has to perform. So these are all higher order functions, map, filter, flat map, these are all higher order functions actually. So you do something called transformations. In one RDD, if you apply any of these functions, it will create a new RDD. That's called transformation. That is how you analyze your data. Let's say I want to filter my data, I will call the filter transformation. And RDDs are immutable, very important point. Once you create an RDD, you cannot change it. You can only create another one by applying some logic. You can never edit an RDD, they are immutable, right? So if I go to my PPT, yeah, so we have created our log lines RDD, fine. Till this we have understood. And then what I did, probably I am interested only in error messages from this RDD. So you, you know, you see there are a lot of data, info, warning, error. I want only error messages to filter. So what I can do, I can call the filter transformation, okay? So I can call a filter transformation and then I can say that, hey Spark, Okay, match only error lines and give it to me. And I'll show you how to light the logic. This will produce another RDD and I can call it as errors RDD. This is the steps in which you write a Spark program. First you create your RDD and now I want to do a filter. I will call a filter and it will, you know, change whatever. I mean, it will filter only error messages and that I will store it as another RDD. Now somebody was asking me what will happen to the memory. Right, so it will delete this RDD. I mean, if there is not enough memory. So let's say this RDD fit into the memory and then you call this filter action. It will filter whatever is required and this will be gone. This is not required now because you have this, right? Because next processing will start from this step, okay? Originally, let's say, assume in the normal use case, you call a function, it creates another RDD and this RDD is gone now. Now this is your current data. So if you have enabled uh, in YARN dynamic allocation, then this will be gone. I told you, right? This is actually a partition and there is an executor running here. Now this guy will be idle because it doesn't know what to do. It cannot predict that there will be no data, right? So that execute, so that is one more problem. Huh. Now your problem is you have four executors. The second executor has no data to process because it filtered all the error. There is no error. Now this guy will be sitting idle. So one data node will be there. One executor will be there that has no data. It will simply sit idle. So that becomes a problem, right? How can I solve that problem? It's actually very easy. 
in spark there is a transformation called coilies coilies is a very common transformation and why do you call coilies you pass a number it will reduce the number of partitions you can resize it because and you have to calculate this but in this example assume you know that see now if you look at the data second partition is empty third partition has only one line that's also not so so i am assuming that i want only two so i can tell spark take this rdd apply coilies keep all the data but delete two partition and two jvm i want only two so it will just bring it into two partitions now so you have to do tests so normally what you do is that you sample it for example just an example if you are having 1 terabyte of data right and you take a good sample of that data uh, let's say 10 gb or 100 gb and you run it once so then you can understand you know uh, after the filter okay you can call a collect action so let's say after the filter i want to see the data i can do it so i know that originally i loaded let's say i don't know 1 gb data or 10 gb data after the filter when i get the data it's only 5 gb that means half is reduced so i can calculate okay if i'm loading 1 terabyte of data i don't have to manage this many jvm so after this step i should call a coilies i can do that so there are two uh, transformations coilies and repartition coilies will always decrease there is no way you can increase if you want to increase you can say repartition from 4 probably you want to go to 8 maybe you want to increase the processing power you know let's say i want to divide it further uh, i have probably some jvms free okay so i can increase the repartition the data so i can say from 4 i want 8 so i can say repartition in bracket i can say 8 <clears throat> so even though if a partition is empty the uh, jvm will keep it there will be no data in the partition but it will remember that i have a partition called p1 there is nothing so yarn will not delete it yarn will think there is something inside it yarn cannot actually go inside and see whether you have something where i told you is that initially when you are creating the rdd right so let's say you mention 10 partition okay you ask for 20 container only 10 will be created 20 will be ideally ideal nothing will be there then it will delete here you have to manually do a coilies to reduce us actually okay so now you have two partitions actually because we just wanted to optimize the code so now you have four i said repartition eight okay it will read the whole data do a full shuffle and just keep them on eight partitions now since you have asked this much repartition can also be used to decrease the number of partition coilies is actually intelligent because if you are doing coilies okay what will happen is that this message might go here this message might go here or there and we'll just delete these two If I am doing a coilies, there is very minimum data movement. If I do a repartition, I'll do a full shuffle. Meaning, from here I can say repartition two. It will do it for me. But before doing that, it'll read all this data into the RAM and do a full shuffle. Then only it'll reduce. So there is maximum data movement in repartition. So ideally, to reduce your number of partition, use coilies. To increase, there is only one way. That is repartition. There is no other way you can use.